and by joining hands, I pronounce that they are man and wife. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, bless, preserve, and keep you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Crazy about you. I don't care who knows it. Oh. Here's Miss Mill. Oh. Another one? Come on. Move out and give the next girl a chance. Give another girl a chance. Come on. Come on. Let's 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 Hello. Oh, hello, Esther. Harrison, I can't make it tonight. Oh, no, it isn't that. He's just witnessed a wedding and it's made him sentimental. You know, he thinks he's still a groom. How about tomorrow? Yes. Ladies, ladies, please remember. He's now a married man. You'll have him all worn out. <laughs> all right, girl. I'll substitute. I'll phone you. Hello, honey. Oh, You've yeah. got to change your clothes. Hurry up. Oh, I was just going in to help Alice change. Oh, yes? <laughs> Gee, honey, you remember? Remember how excited we were five years ago? <laughs> you don't think I could ever forget anything as thrilling as that, do you? Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Fred's the most wonderful man in the world. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It seems to me I've heard that same wonderful man prelude at least a dozen times in the past two years. Yes, but I didn't marry any of them. Fred's different. Yes, yeah. just like Jim. Safe, sound, and satisfying. Molly, <laughs> what in the world? Oh, I feel so sentimental. Because you're sunk now. You're married and buried. <laughs> Don't be silly. Just because I finally took the leap doesn't mean that I'm going into seclusion for the rest of my life. Most certainly not. Snap out of it. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. Erwin! Oh, Alice, that's nifty. Just made for a honeymoon. I really wanted Sable. Sable? Oh, boy. I'm going to have a sable someday if I have to marry a Raja and live in a harem. All you'll need there is a string of beads. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear, but sable. Oh, never mind, Mother. Fred will buy me one. <laughs> then take my advice and get it before the honeymoon is over. 
Hey, the honeymoon's waiting for the bride and groom. Oh, Freddy. Freddy, where are you? Oh, the, oh there you are. <laughs> huh? How do you feel, boy? Yeah, I feel great. <laughs> That's fine. Now, Freddy, I want you to take a little advice from an old married man. Yeah? Women are very peculiar, very delicate creatures. You must be kind, you must be patient. You remember the days about sweetheart. Isn't that wonderful? Fred. Oh, Freddie. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Garland. <laughs> Time's up. Yes, yes, you're not saying goodbye. You're just starting. If you don't mind, oh, you'll be coming. running along. <laughs> Come on. You know. They're coming out. They're coming. Get ready. 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 Goodbye, Bye, goodbye. Bye, goodbye, boy. Bye, dear. Have a lovely trip. She'll be. Gee, mother, I'm the luckiest fellow in the world. And I'm the happiest mother. Bye, bye. 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 You're sleepy, dear? Mm-hmm. You try to ride over and take another little snooze while Daddy telephones for breakfast. Uh-huh. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, sweetheart. Alice? Alice? Uh-huh. Get up, dear. It's 20 minutes past 8. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Why in the world isn't there ever a pair of socks in here? Have you looked? What do you suppose I've been doing for the last five hours? What are these? Gee, that's funny. <laughs> I don't see how you ever got along before you married me. You big bear. Oh, don't. I have a headache. Oh, poor darling. But that's what you get for working all hours of the night. You don't think I do it because I like it? You certainly must. Oh, Alice. Yes, dear. What time did you get in last night? Early, three o'clock. I was so careful not to wake you, I even took off my shoes. Well, I don't enjoy the idea of my wife chasing around with a bunch of night owls. Ooh. Mm. You certainly did get out on the wrong side this morning. Well, did it ever occur to you that a man likes to find his wife home occasionally? <laughs> of course he does, silly. But I don't see you wasting any time at the fireside. Well, you know I'm swamped at work trying to swing that deal. Well, you don't expect me to sit home night after night alone, do you? Oh, 
I don't think you love me anymore. Of course I do. There, now, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be unreasonable. I know you didn't. Now, you better hurry if you're going to have breakfast before Jim stops by. Okay. Don't you realize, dear, I can't afford all of these things. What things? These bills. What's the matter with them? What's the matter with them? Look at that, and that, and that. I know, honey, but I just had to throw a party for Sally when she announced her engagement. Everyone else did. You can't say I haven't tried to cut down. Why, just look at this. I got three hats for the price of one. That's fine, dear. But you'll have to do even better than that. Is anything wrong with your business, dear? Not exactly. But it takes a lot of capital to meet present competition. Every dollar counts right now. Well, if that's the case, honey, I'll show you what an economical little wife you really have. That's the spirit, sweetheart. Oh, darling. I'll need some money today. What's the matter with the bank account I started for you? Well, you know it's the funniest thing. I got a statement yesterday that I'd overdrawn. I thought I had oodles more in the bank. You thought? Don't you know? Don't you keep your stubs balanced? Oh, yes, I always go over them. When? Why, when all the canceled checks come in, of course. I give up. But, Fred, you forgot the money. I can't spare much. But I have to have spending money. Is that all? There's Jim now. Jim isn't that stingy with Esther. I can see now it was a mistake putting you on an allowance. It costs just that much more. Fred. Yes? Yeah. Oh, never mind. You wouldn't do it anyway. You can't tell. What is it? Would you buy me a sable coat? Look, you shouldn't joke that way when I'm late and in a hurry. But I'm not joking. Then get that sable coat idea out of your head once and for all. Other women have them. The women you see wearing sable coats didn't get them from their husbands. Unless they happen to be millionaires. Bye-bye. Hello, Fred. Sorry, I kept you waiting, Jim. Well, that's all right. I'm late anyhow. What's the matter, old man? Worried? I'm beginning to realize it takes a lot of money to support a wife these days. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> Which is worth it, isn't she? You bet. Alice is the greatest little wife in the world, even though it does keep me hustling to make money as fast as she can spend it. Yeah, but that's not the trouble with my wife. <laughs> oh, Freddie, she can make money go farther than any girl you ever saw. Just wait till she gets the sable coat complex. <laughs> oh, she had it. It's just like the measles. They get over it. I hope Alice does. I'll have Esther tell her how she does it. I do know Freddie, even this morning, she told me she was going shopping someplace where they were practically giving things away. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
I was afraid you couldn't get here. I thought he'd never leave. Tell me, what's the surprise you said you had for me? There's a little present over there. What is it? Open it and see. It's a fur. What kind? Why not look? Sable. Oh, you darling. <laughs> you like it? I love it. I'm going to be awfully lonely without you, Jimsy, dear. How long do you expect to be away? For about two weeks. Oh. But I'm not going to be away a second longer than I have to. <laughs> Where's my comb? Over there somewhere. I used it this morning. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Where did this come from? What? Why, this. Oh, that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't tell me you think it's genuine. Sterling silver and space, darling. Three seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly had me fooled. If you don't hurry, dear, you'll miss the oh, train. You said it, no fooling. And everything? Nothing, sir. All set? Yes. Haven't missed a thing as usual, I suppose. <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> you know, I sure hate to leave you, darling. Mm. There we are. Maybe the next time you can take me with you. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Have a nice trip. Done. Let's go. Try not to be too lonesome, won't you, darling? Don't hmm? worry, dear. Bye. Bye. Oh. Bye. Circle two, three, six, four. He's gone. Chicago for two weeks. That's fine. Splendid, yes. Meet me at the Ritz for lunch? Oh, it'll be all right. We'll have a chaperone, my friend, Mrs. Garland. One o'clock. All right, goodbye. Do you really think you'll like it? Of course he will. I wish I'd had enough left to buy that stunning gown. Wasn't it adorable and only $239? Well, why don't you get it anyway? You can charge it, can't you? Why, of course. I never thought of that. After lunch, we'll run up to Lucille's and get it. That's an idea. Here, Mr. Morell. Pleasant surprise, Mrs. Hamilton. Have you met Mr. Morell, Mrs. Garland? 
How do you do? I'm delighted. Thank you. Are you lunching alone? Why, yes. Won't you join us? I wouldn't be intruding. Not at all. Well, I am in luck. I should say we're in luck. Lunching without a man is so stupid. Yes, it's too bad there aren't two of you, Mr. Morell. I'm glad there aren't. Cigarette, I don't remember if you use them. Of course. Mrs. Garland? Thank you. Mr. Morell. I'm going to steal him for the stand. That'd be fine. Well, excuse us. Certainly. Well, bring him the same thing I ordered. Very well, madam. Did anyone ever tell you how divinely you dance? You're not exactly an amateur yourself. Pardon me, Mr. Gowan. Any word from the bank? No, sir. It'll be a big relief when I know they've passed favorably on our loan. I'm sure they will. Shall I send a check for your club dues? No, send in my resignation instead. Yes, sir. Are you the Harrison Morell, the eligible bachelor we read so much about in the town tattler? Oh, yes. But the tattler is notorious for its flattery. Oh, I don't know. They used to say some pretty terrible things about me before I became a respectable married woman. Oh, how could they? They did. They actually accused me of being fickle because I didn't marry all the men to whom I'd become engaged. <laughs> Horrible. You should have sued them for defamation of character. Oh, I didn't mind. It was marvelous publicity. I got more proposals the following week. <laughs> Yes, dear. You better hurry. You just have time to dress. All right. Well, what's the idea? Oh, I was just coming in, dear. Notice anything different about me? Notice anything? I can notice pretty nearly everything. You're not going out on that. Why not? Don't you like it? Like it? There isn't enough of it to like. That thing is indecent. Don't be silly, dear. It's the very smartest thing. Are you sure they haven't pulled your night down by mistake? You used to like me to dress this way before we were married. That's different. It is not. You just don't love me anymore. You're always picking on me. 
There you go. Just because I don't want you to go out looking like September morn, I don't love you. Well, you can't expect me to be a back number. All my friends dress this way. Then you'd better change your friends. And change that dress if you expect me to go out with you. Hello. Yes, Helen. Their copy of the purchase agreement? I think I brought all those papers home with me. Just a moment. Yes, I have them. Is Mr. Wilson there now? Very well, I'll be right down. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> You're not going back to the office. I'm sorry, but I'll have to. You'd better run along without me. I'll do nothing of the sort. Please put those horrid papers away. You have a date with me. I did have, dear. But something unexpected has come up. You go ahead to Esther's, and I'll try to drop in later. You can put that old work off till tomorrow. No, I can't. It's very important. And I suppose I'm not important. Why am I working night and day if it isn't for you? I'm doing everything I can to get my business on its feet. You needn't blame it on that. It's been the same ever since we married. You act as though you don't want me to get ahead. I don't if it means I have to go out alone every time we're invited any place. I've got to make money, haven't I? Where are all the things that you want coming from if I don't work for them? I could be happy on a great deal less if you take a little more interest in me. Oh, darling, please come to where's the party. I told you I have to work tonight. All right, go down to the office with that secretary of yours. Did you prefer her company to mine? Well done, partner. Four no trumps, doubled and redoubled. <laughs> How many times have I told you to lead your fourth best card on a no trump? We'd have set them if we played bridge. Well, but my dear, I... Thought... Don't my dear me. That's what a man gets for playing bridge with his own mate. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> You're out just $750. That's allowed. I'll write you a check. I've won $2,200. Don't you think I'm pretty good? Good. You're perfect. I never saw such luck. She's a marvel. I'll... What are you going to do with all that? Oh, go places and buy things. Why don't you invest in stock? Make a real killing. <laughs> but maybe I wouldn't win. I'll promise you, you won't lose. Will you? I'd be glad to. There's a certain stock that's due for a big advance. Suppose you let me do a little trading for you. I'm game. 
I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Come on, you two. Everybody's having supper. Oh, we've, uh, we've just been counting up Mrs. Garland's winning. How lovely. But do hurry. How long does it take to make a lot of money in the stock market? Well, that depends. I'm so glad you won, Alice, dear. Thank you. Mr. Garland have orange juice or melon this morning? I'm sure I don't know. He's liable to want anything. Now, my dear, it's been three days since you've spoken to him. Don't you think you'd better make up? No. I'm going to teach him a lesson that takes me a week. Oh, good morning, Mary. Good morning. Orange juice or melon, Mr. Garland? Neither. comes to you from the courtesy of the Golden Glow Bakery, distributors of the famous Sweetheart Cookies. Remember the slogan, folks, as sweet as your sweetheart. Continuing with our morning this sunshine hour, we will now turn the microphone over to Miss Eloise Parker, the happiness girl, who will speak to you on the value of a smile. <laughs> and this is Eloise Parker, folks, the happiness girl. <laughs> is everybody happy? <laughs> now, this morning, I'm going to talk about happiness in the home. <laughs> everybody. Mary, what's a synonym for contemptible? I don't know. But maybe Mr. Garland can tell you. Thank you, Mary. You're probably right. Thank you, Mary. Hello? 
Oh, good morning, Mr. Morell. Did you get the confirmation? Yes, I got it, but what does it mean? It means you have a credit balance, $32,000. Dollars? Oh, can I get it right away? I want to buy a sable coat. I'd like to go with you. If you don't know furs, it's very easy to be misled. All right. I'll meet you at Durling's at 11 o'clock. Goodbye. Oh, isn't that lovely? You like that one? I'd like to try that. Make a note of that, will you please? Certainly, Mr. Morell. Oh, look! You must try that one too. All right. Well, Mr. Sable Expert, what do you say? I want to see the other one you liked. I believe it's the better fur. I'll send for it immediately. You know, I wouldn't be getting a sable at all if it weren't for you. You're a dear. You really mean that? Perhaps. Oh, this is more stunning. It's by far the better coat. I'll take it. Shall we deliver it, madam? I should say not. I want to wear it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Garland. You may send my old coat. Yes, madam. Well, beautiful sable lady, shall we have lunch now? I'd love to. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Hamilton. Isn't Mr. Morell in? Why, no. Was he expecting you? Well, no, but I'll wait. Well, I'm sure he won't be here for several hours. He telephoned that he was lunching at the Ritz. Oh. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. The light, Mr. Wilson? Yes, please. I wanted you to see these contracts, Mr. Wilson. Won't you sit over here, Mr. Garland? That's a fine idea, Helen. Thanks. Now, this one here is the uh, most important one. Thanks. I'm driving into the country tomorrow. Couldn't you get away? Oh, you forget, Mr. Eligible Bachelor. I'm a very much married lady. Yes. My hard luck. Hello. 
This is an absolute pleasure, Mrs. Hampton. Yes, isn't it? Why, Esther, you have a sable coat, too. I just bought mine. Isn't it gorgeous? Did you get yours at Durling? I got mine the same place you got yours, dear. Mrs. Garland made quite a clean-up in the market. Mom, wasn't she fortunate? Fortunate? Well, it's easy, my dear. All you have to do is give your money to Mr. Morell, and the next thing you get a letter saying you're rich. Yes, Mr. Morell's quite an expert at that sort of thing. And on furs, too. What he knows about sables would sell a book. Really? I'm learning things about you, Mr. Morell. Yes. I hate to end this pleasant luncheon. I must be running along. Uh, you'll excuse us. Oh, I was just leaving myself. Would you mind dropping me off at my apartment? Certainly. We'd be delighted. <laughs> but Esther, aren't you hungry? I've had my lunch, thank you. How about the banks, Calder? We borrowed heavily from them to make some new factory installations. Mm -hmm. You've seen the contracts. Yes. You know we can place the product. But we must have more cash. Mm -hmm. Gilbert, Morel has two sable ladies today. You must get a quantity discount on fur coat. You may be sure no woman ever got anything from Morel for nothing. Did you see who that was? What's the matter? One of those women is the wife of my very best friend. Poor Jim. Fred. Oh, darling. Let's agree we'll never quarrel again. I'll say we won't. I've been too darned unhappy. After this, when you have to work, I'll never interfere. It was all my fault, dear. I should have gone to that party with you. I wish you had. I... Oh, I've got a surprise for you. Esther and I were... Just a moment. You mustn't see Esther Hamilton anymore. She was at the Ritz today with that fellow Morell, and she was wearing a sable coat. But, Fred... Esther's not the sort of person for you to associate with. Well... Maybe it wasn't Esther, dear. Are you sure? Yes, I saw her. 
He was with two women, both wearing sables. Who? Who was the other woman? I don't know. I didn't see her. But rest assured, she's of the same type. But I... Listen, dear. You're not to see her again. That's final. Now, what was that surprise you had for me? Close your eyes. What is this, a game of blind man's buff or something? You're not looking, are you? Well, not very much. Please don't. You'll spoil everything. All right, I'll be good. Now. You bought this for my birthday, didn't you? Mm-hmm. But I was keeping it till we made up. You like it? Yeah, I'm crazy about it. And about you, too. How about us going out tomorrow night and celebrating? Oh, I'd love to. That's a date, honey. And we won't let business interfere with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll fix it, dear. Never mind, I've got it. Gee, I'm clumsy. <laughs> yes. Where did you get this coat? Why, that's what I wanted to tell you. Where did you get it? Were you with Esther today? Fred, let me tell you. You were with her, with her and Morrell. He bought you that coat. Oh, no, Fred, he didn't. Then where did you get it? I, I made the money in the stock market. You mean Morrell made it for you? Yes, but... Where did you get the money to invest? I, I won it playing bridge. With Morrell? Fred, please listen. Were you playing with Morrell? <laughs> yes, but if you'll just let me explain. So you're just like your friend Esther, a cheat. You'd sell yourself for a sable... Don't you dare talk to me like that. I'm not saying anything that isn't the truth. That isn't the truth. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't let me. You've explained enough. Harrison Morrell isn't giving any woman a sable coat unless... Oh. So that's what you think of me. Where are you going? That's none of your damn business. Took you long enough. Mr. Hammond's in his home. What? He's asleep.
You, Fred Garland? Yes? A little present for you. Pardon me, Mr. Garland. Yes, Helen? The bank just phoned, and they refuse to extend the loan unless we can make a payment. Oh. Well, I guess that just about winds up the firm of Garland and Company. I'm sorry, Mr. Garland. That's all right, Helen. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. Why so sad, Mother, darling? What's wrong? Nothing. Now there is, too. Why, well, you've been crying. What does he mean by the customary check? Fred has sent me money every month since you married him. But why should he? Because, dear, nearly every dollar left us by your father was spent to keep up appearances and to satisfy your demands. I don't see how you can say I was extravagant. I never had half as much as the other girls I know. Oh, it's not your fault, dear. I spoil you. It's too bad Fred had to suffer for my mistake. Fred? Yes. Oh, you... And for clothes and luxuries that he couldn't afford. Oh, don't you understand, dear? He was like me. He loved you so much he couldn't refuse you anything. Hmm. He refused me plenty of things. He wouldn't buy me a sable coat. So you bought it yourself, with money that might have saved him from bankruptcy. Bankruptcy? Yes. The bank is closing him out because he can't meet notes that are due. What are you going to do? I'm going to pay Fred Garland back every cent he gave you. I won't have him saying we're under obligations to him. Alice, please. Fred loves you. Don't do anything that might wreck both your lives. Do you think I could ever forgive him for the thing he accused me of being? Do you think I'd go back to him after that? Oh, darling, you don't understand. I understand that I'm through. I'm going to sell this coat and send him the money. Oh. Hello. Oh, Harrison, I heard you were sailing. You've got to take me with you. Don't be absurd, Esther. You know. Everything packed? Yes, sir. Go at once to the steamship company and make another reservation for Mrs. Fred Garland. Yes, sir. Surely you don't mean... I mean, as soon as Mrs. Garland gets her divorce, she's going to be married. But what about me? I'm sure that your husband can best answer that. Hello, Mother. Hello, Fred. Where is Alice? She saved my life by sending me that money. What's the matter? Alice left while I was out. 
She's going to get her divorce in Paris. Paris? Gee, I thought she changed her mind. I'm sorry, Fred. Well, that's that. I guess she doesn't care anymore. Fred. Please wait. Bonjour, madame. I had a message from Mrs. Hamilton that she was ill and wanted to see me. Esther, dear, it's Alice. Why, I thought you were ill. Thank you. I'm feeling better now that you're here. I'm awfully glad it's nothing serious. I'd feel like a criminal running off to Europe if you weren't well. Your friendship is such a comfort. But you're not going to sail with Harrison Morell. Why not? You thief. Pretending friendship while you steal the man I love. <laughs> oh, you needn't stand there looking so utterly dumb and innocent for you're not going to get away with it. Harrison belongs to me. Oh, I've given all of him. You're startled. You're so early. Aren't you going to kiss me? Oh, yes, of course. What's wrong? What is it, dear? Oh, that makes terrible happen. <laughs> oh, Fred, I've had to do a horrible lesson. I didn't mean to awaken you, dear. Just wanted to kiss you good night. Oh, darling Bruce. I wasn't asleep yet. 